And I was also, it caught my eye, one of your albums, I think back in 2004, was inspired by the blues as well, the tribute to Robert Johnson, uh, yeah. Sweet Home. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Oh my gosh. You know, it's like you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> you know, you just have no idea. Um, I had the great fortune that I used to play with this um, in this duo where it was just voice and a man who's a wonderful cellist. His name is Dana Leong. He's also a trombone player, um, composer. And so we used to have this regular gig at this downtown cafe every other week. And it was just the two of us. And a very, very, very close family fr friend of mine her mom asked me to perform in her apartment. She said, you know, I know somebody who has a record label and he's maybe interested in looking at people. And so I performed at her apartment. And this man, Rick Congress, who's the owner of Random Chance Records, he approached me and said, would you be interested in making a record about Robert Johnson or inspired by Robert Johnson's music? Wow. And I was like, yeah, you know, it's my first, I had no other, nobody else was on the table. Nobody else was asking me. And so that was my first debut album was actually covering the music of Robert Johnson. And prior to then, I really didn't have a deep connection to Robert Johnson's music. But, you know, it's kind of like the meaning of your name or something. It's like starting there in starting with my first record being um, a tribute to a blues artist, it's interesting how that kind of set me on this trajectory where the blues has kind of been a through line. And the funny thing is the studio that we recorded Head Full of Hair, Heart Full of Song at, right when I went into the control room, there was a painting of Robert Johnson in there. <laughs> so I was like, okay, yeah. clearly, you know, this is following me around. That's right. Yeah. Good sign, good omen there. Yeah. What did you learn about Robert Johnson in the blues that maybe you didn't know before that you got a deeper connection with? I guess, you know, I just learned... <laughs> I'm not a guitarist, so I know if, if, if I were a guitarist, I would have a lot to say. So I, I won't pretend that. Um, but the thing that I was really looking at and was interested in was him as a writer, as a lyricist. Because, you know, that was how I really connected to him, was as a storyteller and as a wandering musician. Just this idea of the nomadic wandering musician and all the traditions of nomadic musicians all over the globe. And... Um, I really liked reflecting on the fact that, you know, it doesn't matter what century you're in, it feels like we're always telling a similar kind of a story. True. So, you know, you listen to current pop music and it sounds vastly different from Robert Johnson, but we're still like talking about love and pain and hardship and triumph you know, an accomplishment and fear. It's like, we're still having the same conversations. And so I just really liked that and, and hearing how he told it in his time period. 